On this week's episode of MMA Odds Breaker, we look back at the Strikeforce Diaz vs. Daily event that recently took place on April 9th, as well as reveal odds for four huge fights recently announced. UFC Live on vs. 4, Nate Marquardt vs. Anthony Johnson, Strikeforce Fedora Milenko vs. Dan Henderson, and two fights from UFC Brazil, Anderson Silva vs. Yushin Okami, and finally Mauricio Rua vs. Forrest Griffin 2. This is MMA Odds Breaker. Welcome to the show. I'm Nick Kalikas alongside Miguel Adorade. On this week's show, we're going to look back at the Strike Force Diaz vs. Daily card and see how the betting odds played out. Our MMA Oddsbreaker segment features four huge fights just recently announced from both UFC and Strike Force. Oddsbreaker has two very special guests Jason Navarro from MiddleEasy.com and John Luther from MMAFA.tv. That's right, both Jason and John will get first crack at my odds before they even hit the sports books. Our opening topic here on MMA Odds Breakers is the Strike Force Diaz vs. Daily card. I'm going to have Nick take us through the opening and closing odds and talk about some of the action. We're going to look first at the Diaz vs. Daily main event. Nick Diaz opened up the favorite minus 200 plus 160 on Paul Daly. Now the closing odds on fight day were Nick Diaz minus 215, the comeback plus 175 on Paul Daly. Now, of course, we know the result. Nick Diaz wins by KO. Um, but at the books, we had more individual bets actually did come in on Nick Diaz. Um, but the larger money, the larger action was on Paul Daly. So the sports books ended up winning on this fight due to the amount of action on Daly. What are your thoughts on this fight, Miguel? Well, it went pretty much the way I thought it would go. Uh, I predicted Nick Diaz would win the fight. Um, I was surprised it ended in the first round. I thought it would go a little longer, but uh, it was a great fight. It had all the feel of a street fight, and uh, Nick Diaz is the man. Yeah, outside of GSP right now, I mean, I don't think there's been anybody more impressive than Nick Diaz at welterweight. Okay, the next fight was the co-main event between Gilbert Melendez and Tatsuya Kawajiri. Melendez opened the favor to minus 255. The comeback was plus 205 on Kawajiri. Now, the closing lines were actually Gilbert Melendez minus 285. The comeback plus 225 on Kawajiri. Again, we know the result. Kawajiri loses to Gilbert Melendez by TKO. Melendez very impressive in this fight. Um, the actual count at the sports books, more people did take Kawajiri. And the bigger money was also on Kawajiri, so the sports books profited the most off of this fight, actually, on the card. So, good result for the sports books. Uh, let me know your thought here. Again, uh, I had picked Gilbert Melendez in this fight. I thought it would go a little longer. Kawajiri is very skilled. Um, there was talk that maybe Gilbert was a little rusty. He hadn't fought in a long time. He proved that that's not the case. He proved he's a champion. Yeah, Melendez, a lot of people are thinking he is the number one lightweight right now in the world. And it's hard to argue based off that performance and how hungry and motivated he is right now. The next fight was Shinya Aoki versus Lyle Beerbomb. Aoki opened the favorite at minus 220, comeback plus 180 on Beerbomb. The odds closed, Aoki minus 250, comeback 200 on Beerbomb. We know the result, submission from Aoki. Another impressive performance from Aoki, which I think he needed. Now, the individual action, the players were taking Lyle Beerbomb more, but the larger bets did come in on Shinya Aoki. So the result for the sports books on this fight was a small loss in this fight. So what are your thoughts? Well, uh, you know, I thought Beerbaum still had something to prove. He came out uh, with a bang and an undefeated record. He's lost uh, now a few in a row, and uh, I thought that this would be a tough fight for him. I, I thought that uh, Aoki could show him something that uh, he hadn't seen before, and I think it happened. He got caught quick. Uh, Aoki doesn't do jiu-jitsu. He's got a pro wrestling submission game from Japan, and uh, I thought that uh, uh, Beerbaum, it would be new to Beerbaum, and that's obviously what happened. Yeah, I think Shinya Aoki on the ground, there's not too many that can top him. I mean, he, he's the most dangerous, especially at lightweight, I think, right now in the world on the ground. So you do not want to tangle with Shinya Aoki on the ground. And unfortunately, that's what Lyle Beerbaum did, and he ended up with a loss. Okay, the final fight was Gegard Mousasi versus Keith Jardine. Now, I opened the line, honestly, a little low there. I opened it minus 280 looking back now. The line at some places closed as high as 600, so the line should have been opened a little bit higher. The result of the fight, though, was actually a draw, so the people that were laying that juice were probably, I wouldn't say happy because a lot of people think that that decision uh, should have went to Mousasi. I do agree. The fight ended in a draw, and which results in everybody push. All players get their money back. Uh, what were your thoughts? Um, I thought Musasi uh, would dominate before the fight. Uh, I think Keith Jardine had a good performance. Um, I think he looked a little bit rejuvenated. And um, 
But the fact is, is if I had been judging, I would have given Musasi the fight. Um, I don't think the takedowns um, were followed by really effective offense by Keith. And uh, that's what you have to be careful for out there. It depends on who's judging the fights, too. Because uh, sometimes the judges credit uh, a takedown a little bit too much, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I think one of the hardest parts about MMA betting is the judging because we just don't know what they're going to do anymore. I mean, we watch the fights and we see, see some seriously inconsistent judging throughout not just strike force, not just UFC. It's the athletic commissions. It's some of the judgings that uh, are assigned judges that are signed by the athletic commissions in different states. We've seen some pretty poor judging. So hopefully that continues to improve as MMA keeps on growing and moving forward. We'll see. There's probably a rematch in this fight. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, there is a rematch down the road, and Musasi's going to come in hungry to win. Joining us now to help us out with our odds breaker segment from MiddleEasy.com is Jason Navarra and from MMAFA.tv is John Luther. Now guys, welcome to the show first of all. And how this works is BetDSI, our sponsor, has each given you guys $5,000 cash in a bank account. So your bankroll, you're starting off with five dollars and you get to bet a maximum of $500 to risk or win each fight. Okay, we're going to start off with John. Now the lines we're going to cover today, I'm really excited about. They um, were recently announced future fights. We're not going to point out one particular card. We're going to jump around and um, kind of cover a few different cards as we go here. The first fight is actually from UFC Live on Versus 4, the headlining fight. And we're going to start with you, John. My opening odds for this fight is Nate Marquardt minus 185. The comeback on Anthony Johnson is plus 155. Guys, you guys get to hit these odds before any, anybody else, so let me know your thoughts here. John, go ahead. Well, hey, thanks for having me back on the show, Nick. Um, uh, you are in luck today because I, I know who the loser of this fight is going to be, and that's going to be the kidneys of uh, Nate Marquardt and Anthony Johnson, respectively. Uh, somebody call 911 because we are going to need emergency rehydration for this fight. It's going to be an absolutely brutal weight cut. And uh, personally, I think the fight should just happen at, at middleweight. It'll save both guys maybe two years on their life expectancy. But I think the key to this fight is you got to ask yourself, how would Anthony Johnson do at 185 if he was in Marquardt's position? Would he be beating guys like Demian Maia or Husamal Paul Harris? Would he be, you know, perpetually on the verge of a title shot? And I think the answer is no. I think Anthony Johnson has one distinct advantage here, and that's his wrestling. It's not some deep collegiate experience that he has, but it is something. However, I think uh, Nate Marquardt has a takedown defense to keep him at bay, keep the fight standing en route to probably a TKO victory sometime in the second or a unanimous decision. Got to go with Nate Marquardt here uh, for the max bet. Okay, so you're laying minus 185 for the max bet of $500. Now, an interesting fact here is that Anthony Johnson obviously is going to have an inch, in, uh, reach advantage. He's coming in at 78 inches compared to uh, Nate Marquardt's 74 inches, so he is going to have um, a reach advantage. On the feet, it's close. I mean, technical, you could say... Nate Marquardt has uh, the more technical striking ability, but again, Anthony Johnson, we've seen his striking improvement. We've seen him also become a smarter fighter here. So if this fight doesn't go to the ground, I think Anthony Johnson can hang in there, and if, if he comes in serious, he's a possible live dog here. Give me your thoughts, Jason. Yeah, I'm actually quite opposite. I think that uh, Anthony Johnson, uh, probably because of the experience of cutting to 170, will probably have the advantage over Marquardt. Um, What's with uh, the Jackson camp lowering their weight classes uh, with Jardine going down to 185, uh, Marquardt doing this? Um, as much as it hurts me, I'm a huge Pancrase fan. I really do think that Anthony Johnson will be able to do this, uh, especially after seeing what happened with Chael Sonnen and then Yushin Nokami after that. I think uh, Marquardt will probably succumb to the wrestling once again. Okay, so we, we have you guys splitting on here. And again, I think it's going to be one of those fights that's hard to predict. We might see the line float up on Nate Marquardt because I personally feel if Marquardt wins this, he wins it by submission. I think that's Anthony Johnson's uh, weakness. He hops on his back, possibly chokes him out. If not, he could, uh, Anthony Johnson could out-wrestle him, get the takedowns, and win a decision. So we're going to see what the public thinks about this fight here soon. Okay, the second fight on the board for today is a battle between two legends in the sport. Really excited about this matchup. Again, recently announced um, a mega fight for Strikeforce. 
the card is going to be rumored to be held around July 30th of uh, this year. So it's Fedor Emelianenko headlining versus Dan Henderson. Now, Jason, we're going to start off with you. I'm going to open up Fedor Emelianenko minus 275. Comeback is going to be plus 215 on Dan Henderson. Give me your thoughts first, Jason. Uh, the odds sound right. I, I mean, it's a tough one. Hendo will be moving up to heavyweight. He said that. Um, it won't be at 205, and he supposedly doesn't do catchweight. So the question is, uh, how much muscle will he put on? Will he be out of shape? Uh, it's hard for me to ever, ever, ever bet against either one of these guys. Um, my personal scenario in this is that, like, that double knockout, maybe get Shoney Carter as the referee. That's the only way I'll be happy. But uh, I would always say I will stay uh, 500 on Hendo. Okay, so you're going to take the dog, um, at, right? $500 on the dog, you're going to bet Henderson to plus 215? Yeah, and I have no idea how the fight will finish. I, I, I just, you know, in in a time where you can't uh, figure out what's going to happen, I think you always got to bet the dog. Okay, not, not again. I've, I've talked to several people about this fight uh, off there, and uh, a lot of people are going both ways. A lot of people are thinking Fedor is going to win this fight. A lot of people are thinking Dan Henderson is going to win this fight. Um, we're going to go to John now and get John's thoughts. John, minus 274 Fedor, are you going to lay the juice or are you going to take the dog price on Dan Henderson? I'm, I'm going to differ from uh, Jason here. Uh, I, I agree with him that this fight is, you know, it's probably going to be just absolutely wild. It's like the battle of overhand rights. Both guys seem to, to throw it from their hip. I don't think there's any question they can knock out anybody at any given time. The question is, can they knock out each other? And I'm, I'm looking forward to see uh, what the answer to that question is. I, when you look at both guys, they're both very, very similar. They're both really good in the clinch. They both have a lot of power in their hands. Uh, but with all things being equal, I think Fader is going to have a size advantage. I wish he would have gone down to 205, um, but I, I got to go with Fedor here, um, and I will bet, uh, you know, I'll bet the max. I feel pretty confident in him. Okay, two interesting perspectives. Again, you guys split, which is uh, a little bit funny to me because I think uh, normally on the past before when we've had a couple guests on, um, the majority of the fights were both both guys run the same guy so this is interesting to me and I think the public's going to agree with both of you guys we're going to see split action here as well I personally feel that Henderson is kind of making a small mistake um, by not making this a catchweight fight he wants to go up as John just mentioned to heavyweight and I think Fedor has more ways to win this fight that's why he's opening almost a three to one favorite so I'm personally leaning towards Fedor a little bit more but Dan Henderson does have that knockout power he's a legend in the sport a veteran in the sport so it wouldn't shock me if he pulls off the upset either so good fight to see possibly July 30th coming up.